Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and starting off the day here on this uh, March 22nd, 2024. Uh, we already have breaking news coming out of Russia. Presidential spokesman Peskov said that Russia is in a state of war. <clears throat> yeah, believe it or not, in a state of war. No longer a special military operation in Ukraine. And that a, has a lot to do with uh, NATO just continually to provoke the situation, making it worse. All Russia has ever wanted in this, oh gosh, more than a decade that they've waited on trying to bring some peace and stability for Ukraine was to see eastern Ukraine, uh, that is the Donbass region, these people get their independence. They are the more of the ethnic Russian and Russian-speaking Ukrainians that wanted their independence because, you know, it's just it's just gone crazy. The, the crimes against humanity that have been committed against these people has been atrocious. And the bloodshed, the innocent civilians that are kidnapped, etc., by the Ukrainian military just was relentless. And then the <clears throat> Azov Battalion, uh, a very neo-Nazi battalion that was getting ready to launch a massive attack on the Donbass region to finally bring them under control was thwarted by the Russian military when they came in and put a stop to that. So <clears throat> Russia's intention has not been to take Ukraine as a whole. It's only been to protect the ethnic Russian-speaking people in the eastern part. And for, quite frankly, I'm surprised it took putting that long. But, and again, we, had, we know the other side of the story too. Uh, Edward Kudo, the former um, Chabad rabbi that came out and exposed that there was going to be a war between Russia and Ukraine and that they would do it intentionally to kill off the Slavic people. Yes, very disturbing. Anyway, Mr. Peskov explained that Russia cannot allow the existence of a of a state on its border that has documented its intention to use any methods to take away Crimea and territories of the new regions. According to Peskov, Vladimir Putin has repeatedly <clears throat> spoken about the importance of ensuing the safety of the residents of the new constitu uh, excuse me, constituent entities of Russia and return territories that are now actually under the occupation of the Kiev regime. Uh, as the Kremlin emphasizes, Moscow is closely monitoring the statements being made and warns that consequences of sending foreign troops to Ukraine could be irreparable. Now, <clears throat> all types of news is coming out uh, of, the, of the Far East like that, Russia, etc., Europe, and I want to share some of that with you. This part here, Putin basically is stating in this particular um, interview that he gave... <laughs> that uh, Western elites have been accustomed for centuries to filling their bellies with human flesh and their pockets with money. But they must understand that the vampire ball is coming to an end. Uh, that's pretty startling uh, when we look at this interview uh, that the uh, President Putin is saying there, and of course with him being reelected in a landslide victory, you can count on one thing. Russia's getting ready to go to war, and not just with Ukraine. Uh, we might find that in uh, Dmitry Medvedev, uh, the former president of Russia, who spoke about the requirements for the work of the military-industrial complex enterprises in the state of Russia, that is. Don't get that confused with uh, the United States' military-industrial complex. But uh, <clears throat> the prospects need that exist today in Russia's Military industrial complex require the most coordinated and fast work possible. Deputy chairman of the Russian Security Council, Dmitry Medvedev, said at a meeting. The prospects that exist and the needs we have today require the most coordinated and fast work possible. Medvedev emphasized at that particular meeting there. In other words, they got to make as many bombs and weapons as they possibly can because he knows Russia is about to engage a war against NATO. And so, uh, you know, there, there, there could be a, a lot said to that, but nonetheless, even like in this uh, article here on Letna.ru, the State Duma responding to the condition of war with Russia named in Germany, uh, Deputy uh, Zarova called the words about the conflict between the Russian Federation and Germany part of the information war. 
you, you might <clears throat> argue to some degree that it's an information war, but let's face it, it's growing to a place where it's going to go beyond information. And that's where the situation is getting very serious, very dangerous, to say the least. So at the same time, she emphasized that the idea of the military clash with Russia would not be supported by the majority of Germans. I don't think the German population would like this very much, and I don't think Germany is really ready for war. The Germans themselves don't like it at all, the parliamentarian added. Uh, and that's this lady pictured right here, Miss... Um, uh, Zaharova, who is the deputy uh, for Germany there. It, it's, yeah, I agree with, I agree with that. She's right probably about that too. Germans don't want war with Russia. Who's leading this war then? Who's provoking the war? Well, a lot could be said about that there. Especially if you look at the article here on WND, compromise Biden leading U.S. to disaster, says Air, uh, actually a retired Air Force general uh, in, in a meeting recently. Uh, he says that um, it's not statistically possible for the administration to make 100% of its decisions counter to the United States interest without some other factor at play. <clears throat> Get the hot, uh, excuse me, if Americans want to know what that factor is, said Holt, Start watching what con Congressman uh, Comer is doing in, in his oversight committee. Um, he goes on to say, every single day he is peeling back the onion on the Chinese compromise of this administration. And uh, in March 14th press release, uh, Comer announced a government-wide investigation of the Chinese Communist Party, ongoing efforts to target, influence, and infiltrate every sector of the community in the United States, including but not limited to the American education, agricultural, critical infrastructure, research, energy, and business space, and in every area, Holt stress. The Chinese are not only making deals favorable to the Chinese and their interests, but also to the second and third order interests. These include Russia, Iran, and he explained, and if you look through that prism, things start to explain themselves. For example, we're not going to take Iran to task for on anything because we'd be messing with China's oil supplier, uh, Holt told WND. And that's why we're doing nothing more than throwing rocks at the Iranian-backed Houthis instead of just ending them. Uh, we also have a wide open southern border that compromises American security, he added. Uh, fentanyl is killing the country, but once again, it's the Chinese alliance with the cartels that makes China off limits. And, and you know, the, the real issue behind the Chinese uh, alliance with the cartel is all the dirt on the politicians that they have, both Republican and Democrat alike. That's how they can get whatever they want done in this country. And as I have been told, third parties involved in there, and they control what happens in the United States just from that. I think we already brought out the Canadian minister uh, the other day on foreign affairs. Milani Jolly announced today uh, during an interview that Canada will be halting any further arms shipments to Israel following a non-binding vote in the House of Commons with the vote uh, coming following claims by extremist left-wing members of the New Democratic Party who stated Israel is not doing enough to provide protection to civilians in Gaza. Now, there are some of you that may feel like Israel does do everything they can to protect civilians. No, they don't. What you're about to see is very graphic. And... Viewer discretion certainly advised. I'm going to show you the pastime that happens in this Gaza war. While they sit there and watch civilians walking down the road and then just decide to obliterate them with a drone. So viewer discretion is advised. This is one such video, four people walking along 
on the outskirts of the city right there. Uh, I kind of know this type of location mainly because I know the demographics pretty well as much as I've lived there and of course knowing how Gaza is, is built there. Those dirt roads there are on the outskirts of the city there running along the side there where everything's all bombed out. So it's probably the easiest way to walk from one little place to the other. Thinking that they can walk in safety without any fear of being killed. They're not armed. They don't have any weapons on them. That's a drone watching them as they're walking along and then just blown to smithereens. And that's not the only time this happened. That's not the only time. Here's another guy just walking along. Carrying, it's not a weapon for sure that he's carrying. He's just got some kind of a thing. And, and they, they even zoomed in on him to see. Didn't pose any threat. Just blow him up. And then another one. And these are just the, the, the incidences where they, they, they look up and find the people. Guy crawling. I mean... He probably gets shot. Don't know if he got shot or just twisted his ankle or whatever, but then they just blow him up. This is Israeli military. And if you remember, I shared with you when I lived in Israel back in 2004 during the Intifada, went through the suicide bombing. A roommate of mine was a uh, IDF soldier at the time. Uh, he was going through uh, some treatment because of his injuries that he had suffered in a Jeep accident, left him partially paralyzed. And he shared with me. And at this time, I was very pro-Zionist, you know, so I didn't care for the Palestinian people. I didn't, I didn't care for their cause or their concern or why, what they go through. But then he told me about how that they target practice on them. And it was like no big deal. It was just a joke for fun. And I questioned him about this. And then I got very disturbed by it. And I told him, I said, Iran, I said, this is wrong. You, you don't, you know, even though I didn't care for Palestinians at the time either, I knew that you don't just go out and start shooting people because you need to sharpen your skills. Is that what they're doing with the drone? Is that is that what happens here? You know, I mean, the guy falls down. I don't know if he was shot or what. But he's crawling on the ground, totally unarmed, and they blow him up. This is absolutely disgusting. You know, I don't say anybody could support this war. It's disgusting what happened to, to, to the Israelis on October the 7th. But mind you, let me, let me share with you what Senator Chris Van Hollen had to say about that issue as well. I'm one who believes that we should have been doing more all along to weaken Hamas. We've talked about Iran today. We have not discussed the inconvenient truth of the fact that Prime Minister Netanyahu himself saw it in his interest to keep Hamas in control in Gaza. Don't take my word for it. Uh, he told us this back in 2019 at a Likud meeting party party meeting where he said, and I quote, anyone who wants to prevent the creation of a Palestinian state needs to support strengthening Hamas. This is part of our strategy to divide the Palestinians between those in Gaza and those in Judea and Samaria, end quote. Netanyahu. After all, so long as Hamas was in control in Gaza, how could anybody ask Israel to accept a Palestinian state that included Gaza and the West Bank? Good question. So Prime Minister Netanyahu and his extreme 
right-wing partners have embarked on a concerted strategy to weaken the Palestinian Authority, which recognizes Israel's right to exist, and to strengthen Hamas, which doesn't. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter into the record a, a piece that appeared in Haaretz in October of last year, a brief history of the Netanyahu-Hamas alliance. Without objection, it be included in the record. We also have heard a lot of talk uh, since October 7th about Qatari funds going uh, to Hamas. Uh, Ms. Maloney, isn't it true that those funds flowed with the concurrence of Prime Minister Netanyahu and Israel? Yes, that's true. That is true. So when I hear all my colleagues talk about this Qatari money, please recognize that this was done with the consent and encouragement of Prime Minister Netanyahu. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter the record an article, a CNN article, Qatar sent millions to Gaza for years, dash, with Israel's backing. Without objection, be included in the record. And, Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to enter into the record a New York Times article from December of last year entitled, Buying Quiet, Inside the Israeli Plan that Propped Up Hamas, sub-headline, Prime Minister Netanyahu gambled that a strong Hamas, but not too strong, would keep the peace and reduce pressure for a Palestinian state. Without objection, it be included in the record. And Ms. Maloney, have you also seen the reports about how Prime Minister Netanyahu was informed about various sources of Hamas's um, monies kept overseas, including uh, some in Turkey, and decided to ignore those warnings? I've seen those reports. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to um, enter into a record, a New York Times piece, again from December of last year, headline, Israel found that Hamas money machine, found Hamas money machine years ago, nobody turned it off. Without objection. I'm one who believes. <clears throat> and there you have it right there. I wanted to play the entire clip for you uh, because Netanyahu created this beast. Uh, Senator uh, Ron Paul uh, brought that out when he was active. All right, one thing I do definitely want to share with you guys, if you go to our livewave.com forward slash Ben Noon, B-E-N-N-U-N website there, and just click on shop there. One thing that I have really fell in love with on, with this company is Energy Enhancer. Uh, as I got older and everything, I've had more and more issues with energy. I do a lot of caffeine as a result. Uh, doesn't do my heart any good to be using caffeine like I've been doing. And uh, I've been trying to figure out what balance of vitamins and minerals and stuff. Am I missing something? But then I started, I decided, okay, I knew that the company made the energy enhancer. And uh, so I watched some of the scientific studies. And it's not just energy does a lot of other things as well. And uh, that's how I get my energy. And a heck of a lot cheaper. You know, how many of you guys go out there and let's say, for example, if you are using caffeine, you know, uh, you know you're gonna spend twice as much money. By the way, the Energy Enhancer, if you, if you put it on auto ship, is $69.95 a month. If you buy it as a bulk product, it goes as low as $49.95 a month, like three packages at one time which easily will last you three, you know, well, one package is supposed to last a month. I tend to wear it a little bit longer myself. I don't even take it off at night now. I found out some of the benefits that it does, even when I'm sleeping, is incredible. And yeah, I can actually go to sleep. Uh, you, you end up dreaming a little bit more as a result, but it is the easiest, most natural way uh, doesn't put any drugs in the body or anything like that. And I absolutely love this product. Uh, my wife also. In fact, bad thing is I took, we had two packages. I had one here in Florida. And uh, and then I accidentally took the one that we had there in Tennessee. And she stayed in Tennessee because I was only coming down here for a week. And she's not happy with me right now because she started realizing the benefit as well. So check it out. I'm sure you'll appreciate it. And don't forget, those of you that are already uh, actually distributors with us, that are, uh, don't forget tonight we have a special Zoom meeting for those that are really serious, more in the business aspect of this. We have... Uh, Jason uh, coming on with us tonight and a special guest that he's bringing that can really help uh, enlighten you on that. 
So that will be uh, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, x39hub, hubhub.com. Uh, you can join us for that. Thank you, and thank you for listening. God bless.